Hello and welcome to this momentous occasion. This is going to be my first video where I do something historical-ish. Uh, I've been wanting to do this for some time now, but I just haven't gotten around to it yet. So without much further ado, I'm going to be making a 1920s cloche, 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 cloche hat out of this. Why 1920s? Well, 1920s wasn't my favorite era by a long shot, but I kind of just fell in love with it after making a 1920s summer dress, which was so cute. But of course, now it needs a hat. Yeah. <laughs> So, I found this here hat at the thrift store. It is from America Today. I don't know if you can see. It was squashed flat entirely. It's, I managed to sort of get it back into shape with some steam. And while I like it, I would like a cloche hat even better. I always try and salvage as many materials as I can when I'm deconstructing and customizing stuff. Because, you know, you never know when it might come in handy. This is a good sized piece of, oh, what's it, faux leather ribbon. I could find a use for this, I'm sure. But here we have our almost cloche hat. It's not going to be a very labor intensive job, I think. I shouldn't jinx it. At first I thought I was going to have to unpick all of this thread by hand, but then I noticed <laughs> it just comes loose like this, which is good because I don't have any thread that looks like this. So we're going to use this to reshape the hat brim and that we do not have to pick all of this out by hand is just beyond awesome you've hit a snag not to worry i think i'll just cut this here now there save that too Hopefully once we cut this, it'll go as easy as the bit we just did. Darn. Oh, I have to be very careful here not to damage the straw. Very careful. Okay. Does it come loose? Yes, it does. Don't think there ain't no Santa Claus. I know darn well there is because my... Just have to be careful not to unpick it too much because that means extra work. Okay. <laughs> this looks really horrible. I hope it's gonna get better. I, I might just not have a very good cloche, cloche head. Cloche head. That's the thing. Cloche head. Cloche head. Yes, I think we've definitely unraveled enough. Where are my pins? Where are my pins?
what I wanted to do is still continue on downwards in the back but then as it comes around to the front I want the brim to stand out a little bit more because otherwise it's just gonna be like some sort of helmet instead of a wonderful fashionable cloche <laughs> I am trying to shape the hat by pushing the straw piece that I'm sewing on a little bit in on itself. I don't know if, it, if you can tell on camera. Because if you do that, it starts to stand out a little bit. And that's what we want for the final stage. Just a tiny little bit of bell shape. You have to keep in mind where the back is and where, where the front is. Don't lose sight of that, otherwise it'll turn up wonky. Turn out wonky, that should be. I've lost track of the amount of times that I've stabbed myself in the finger in this process. So be careful when poking the needle through. It's also important to look at it from this angle, I think, to see if it's all still going as planned. Because here you can see, here's the back. The sides and the front are balanced out pretty well, I think. I think I'm gonna leave it like this, because I'm happy with the shape. Yeah, so we're gonna leave it at that. I'm going to Take it off, firstly. I've passed this, the, the spot in the back, the middle back. The middle back, yeah. Uh, anyway, so I'm gonna have to go back a little bit. days have passed. Maybe a week. Maybe a few weeks. Maybe a few weeks. And I have worn my little cloche hat a few times. I really like it. But the top bit is still a bit wonky. We need to fix this because this is not okay. I mean it was way way wonkier than this when I picked it up at the thrift store. It was like it was like flat. It's as if it had been lying in between two very heavy books for a good long while. But with the steaming iron, I managed to sort of give it back its original shape, but it still remained a little bit squashed here and here and here. And we need to fix that. So for the occasion, I'm going to use newspaper. Lots of it. Just stuff it old newspaper. This is an experiment by the way, I don't know if this is going to work. But the thought behind this is that it sort of works as a hatch, what are those things called? Those wooden things on which they make the felt hats, you know, where they stretch them into the shape they want to. What are they called? Hat blocks? Is that the word? Anyway, this is going to be my hat block. Newspaper. Readily available. Okay. Now it's off to the steaming iron. It's already looking a lot better, but we're not there yet. I 
think I need more newspaper. That's more like it. I think we've managed to press all the wonky bits out of the crown. Now onto the edges. This is why I put the extra newspaper in because it was up to, the newspaper was up to here. It got squashed all the way to the crown because that's where I was putting the most pressure on. So we put some extra newspaper in for the sides. Yeah, it definitely looks better now that we have gotten all the wonky bits and creases out. It's starting to look like a, a real cloche hat. Cloche, cloche. I keep stumbling over that word. Now that we've ironed out all the kinks, it is time for decoration. Not that it isn't perfectly wearable already as is, and I have in fact worn it already completely unadorned, and it's already very, very cute like this. Um, the vintage straw cloche hats that I saw online in my, my search for examples were all adorned in some form or the other. This doesn't of course mean that there were no unadorned cloche hats, I just haven't seen them. Uh, either way, decorations are fun, so I'm going to decorate this one. I've chosen something that is very close to the color of the straw hat. By the way, you might have noticed that I have flipped the back edge up. Uh, this is something that they reportedly started doing towards the end of the 1920s. I'm going to use this ribbon. And also, these little crocheted roses. I found the pattern online. It was, I think, a scanned in page of a French fashion magazine from the 1920s. And it had directions how to crochet little leaves and roses in two different sizes. Now my crochet skills are not terrific, so I do not feel confident to include a crochet tutorial upon how to make these. Also, I don't feel that I have gotten them entirely right because French is not my first language. I tried to figure it out as best I could, but I still feel they come out a little odd. And therefore I feel I sh I'm not really qualified to do a tutorial on those, but I will put a link in the description box below so you can have a go at it yourself if you feel so inclined. They are cute. And I'm going to put them on the hat. Thank you. 